Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Brave Little Belgium. It is a game designed by Ryan Heilman and Dave Shaw, and it is published by Hollenspiel. It is uh, a game that I saw at WBC last year, and as I said in my recap, what I found most compelling with uh, this game is the true David and Goliath feel it brings to the table, uh, while also providing a plausible course for Belgium to win the game. Uh, at first glance, you'd think that, you know, Belgium, they're taking on uh, the German army. They, they're outnumbered four to one. They're gonna be nothing more than just a speed bump, but that's not the case. In this game, variable setup, chip pull, and there's enough chaos and uncertainty that it allows you a chance to frustrate the German army and uh, really slow down their advance through Belgium as they're trying to get to France. And if you can do it and run the clock out on Germany, you can win the game. Okay, so let's take a look at the back of the box. It says here, in the wake of the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, a complex web of interlocking treaties led to powers both great and small taking sides in the Great War. Belgium, however, declared its neutrality. German war plans against France called for an invasion through Belgium, and they demanded free passage. When the Belgians refused, the Germans invaded. Brave Little Belgium recreates this dramatic early campaign of the First World War in a lightning quick introductory war game with plenty of challenges for both sides. As the German player, you must smash through the enemy's defenses as quickly as possible, relentlessly advancing, but push your men too hard and they might commit atrocities that will rally world opinion against you. As the Entente player, you must stage a desperate defense against overwhelming odds, when and where to fall back, where to take a stand, are decisions of vital importance. Combat is fast and streamlined, while a clever take on chip pull activations creates moments of tension and uncertainty. The result is an engaging war game for new recruits and grognards alike, from first-time designers and longtime friends Ryan Heilman and Dave Shaw. And it says up here the components, you get a 22 by 17 inch map sheet, 88 counters, 8 page rule book, and 8 six-sided dice. And on the side here, it gives you a little bit more information for two players. Duration of the game is 60 minutes, solitaire suitability is high, and it is medium weight. This is definitely uh, an interesting game. I really enjoyed my play at WBC, and I'm really looking forward to getting this on the table. And I really love this cover. It's a very simple cover, uh, but compelling. You have the, this Belgian soldier. He's looking pretty bleak right now, pretty beat up, but defiant, standing there holding the Belgian flag as he's fought in a tenacious battle. I love the audacity that the Belgians showed taking on the Germans. Well, let's take a look inside. We've got our rule book here, eight page rule book, 88 counters, our map, and we've got eight dice. We'll put these on the side and we'll open up this map and then take a look at the game itself in a little bit more detail. Another fantastic map done by Anya Zielkowska. She does such a great job. Uh, one of my favorite artists in wargaming, for sure. And uh, I really love the look uh, it, on this map and how functional everything is. You have your pull chits and turn end markers over here, the guard civic setup, the turn track down here, and then you have the atrocities counter here on this side and then you have all the different point-to-point -point movements and then the battle board up top. So what's going to happen is as you're moving counters around, the battle board is used for deciding your battles. You're going to, um, say you move in here, you're going to take your counters and you're going to put this combat marker in this space where the combat's going to occur. You're going to move all the units that are there, both attacker and defender, move them up to the battle board and you will then separate them by strength and then carry out battles. And then you'll, at that point, once it's done, you'll then uh, determine where your units move. Either they retreat out, they advance, so on and so forth. But let's take a look at these counters. And these are the counters. You have your German units up here. You have both infantry and cavalry. You have British units here. You have your Belgians, which are the green, and then the French, which are the blue. And this is a chip pull, and the chits are right here for the uh, British, the Belgians, two for the French, and then four for the Germans. So both the Entente and the German side each have four counters that you're going to use. And you're also going to get these turn end markers, and you're going to be also using these event markers as well in the chit pull. And what happens is when you pull the event out, it's going to go on the side. These are pulled chits. And then anytime during the game, the player that has that chit, it's basically 
in your bank and you can use it at that time. So I really like that. Plus chip pull is my favorite activation system for playing war games because it's really solitaire friendly. Uh, the turn ends when all three of these turn end markers are drawn out and that's when you will move on to the next turn. However, for the German player, if any unit has not activated once the third, third uh, turn end marker has been pulled, they can activate the units that have not uh, been activated to this point. The drawback to doing that, the risk to doing that, I should say for the German player is when he does that, you've got to roll a dice and you've got a 50% chance. On a roll of four through six, they will, the Germans will commit atrocities. So you could end up you know, committing two, three atrocities in a turn and you only have the five and you if you get the five, the game's over. So you really have to watch. That's a nice little push your luck mechanism in the game. And it's a great way of framing in the atrocities that did take place uh, by the Germans as they push through Belgium without uh, drawing the game down in, in gameplay. It really does make the German player, especially later, if the uh, Belgians can frustrate the Germans, the Germans have to take risks, but how much do they want to push that? And that's where the game really is compelling and really fun uh, in a very simplistic manner. And I think that's fantastic. And it's this uh, type of game that you can play with war gamers and non-war gamers alike. It's a game for everybody, very easy to play. Um, another thing about this is the Guard Civic, the Civic Guard. They're basically your National Guard uh, militia units that you're going to have out there. And on the back of these units, this is how they're going to be put out there. You're going to put them down, you're going to mix them up, then you're going to place them either using the guard civic setup or you can actually put them out there uh, intentionally setting them up the way you want to. But you don't know what the strength is of the unit that's going to be out there. So when you flip them over is the only time you're going to know it. Now there are 12 of them. Three of them are at four strength, three are at five, three are at six, and three have nothing. So you don't know is that you're, you're not going to know when you put that out there if you put out the random setup if you have a weak unit out there or if you have a moderate strength unit a really strong unit or middle of the road unit but they're not the greatest they're four through six all of the units out there for the germans are four and fives you do have one six unit uh, you do have a couple of six units there are, i think one infantry from each of the different um cores are going to be six units but the belgians themselves are all fives and sixes and then you have forts as well uh, the french also have forts the french are going to be again fours and fives and the british are all going to be two fours and a five so these are regularly I hate to, I'm not knocking the Belgian army, but uh, these are regularly better trained troops. The Belgians were not on the same par as the Germans, the French, and the British. So that's the best way to reflect it is by having them at fives and sixes. But again, a pretty simple system and pretty, pretty compelling though when you play it. So let's take a look inside the rule book. The rules start on page one and they go all the way to the back of the book, which is page six. And the back here gives you the setup diagram on the back of the book. This, it says it's an eight page rule book, but it's actually shorter. It says here, how you get your introduction, your components, how the, uh, the map legend, you have capital cities, uh, forts and forts within objectives. And these are cities. And then up here, Brussels, that's capital city marked with the capital marker at the top right. But you also have minor ports or minor forts, I should say, major forts and forts within objectives. And the forts within objectives would be like Namur here. That is a fort with an objective. Liege, uh, Antwerp up at the top right is a major fort. Okay, so we'll go back here to the rules. You've got your component explanation, your combat units, infantry, cavalry, reduced, uh, the guard civique, which I already talked about. Uh, the, the other thing I didn't talk about when I was looking at those uh, components or the counters is that some of these counters are only that units, the rest of them are uh, double step. There are only a couple of that from each. They're cavalry and infantry from the Germans, two cavalry and uh, infantry. Uh, you've got cavalry infantry down there for the Southern Corps. They are single step units. The same for the British. They have one single step unit and a couple here for the French. The rest of them are double step units. Cavalry generally is going to be a single step unit. Uh, two step, I should say, not double step. And then you have your markers and chits up here at the top right. The uh, fort markers, which we already talked about. You have your game turn, your atrocities marker, which is going to be used in your atrocities track. And then the combat 
which is what's going to be placed in the spot when you're going to place your combat or when you're going to where combat's taking place that you're going to be doing on the battle board. You have your activation uh, counter, your event counter, and the turn end counter that you use in the chip pull. And then it has an explanation of setup along with some variants and optional setups that you can use. Then you have your turn sequence which is the chip pull phase. You have army activation, movement, combat, and then additional German activation phase, which is what we've already talked about when it comes to the atrocities. Uh, you will roll a dice to see if they activate, and a four through six, uh, they will commit atrocities. On a one through three, they will not. You have the army activation, movement, and combat. And your cleanup phase. Then this explains to you how the drawing the chip works, movement, combat, and then calculations on your uh, die roll along with modifiers, retreat and advance along with applying losses. And an interesting thing here is uh, advance, uh, it says here advance is possible in very specific circumstances. The attacker has to win the battle and has five times more units than a defender and the defender's unit was all eliminated in battle and the attacker did not sustain any losses. If all these conditions are met, the attacker may advance into one additional space regardless of movement factors. The attacker must keep all the victorious units together in a single stack. If they advance into a box containing enemy units, they initiate a new combat which resolved immediately. However, that attacking stack may not advance a second time even after a resolve in the combat if they meet criteria. Then you have siege combat with the forts and then game end and victory. A German player's objective is to complete all of the following. They need to destroy the major fort of Liege, destroy the major fort of Namur, occupy a city on the other side of the victory line with an infantry unit, and whether or not and when these objectives are achieved determines the winner of the game. If the German player has achieved all three objectives at any time during August 19th through the 21st turn, the game is a German victory. Uh, achieving this before that turn does not win the game. They have to hold that occupied city until the August 19th, 19th through 21st turn. If the German player has achieved all three objectives at any time during the August 22nd to 24th or 25th through the 27th turn, the game is a draw. If the German player fails to achieve all three objectives before the end of the chip pull phase of the August 25th through 27th turn, the game is an Entente victory. If the German player commits five atrocities, the game immediately ends in an Entente victory. And here is the turn track where it starts off August 4th through the 6th, all the way through the 25th to the 27th. And this is the color coding for the different victory uh, conditions that we just talked about. But that is uh, a pretty quick overview. I didn't go into all the nuance of the game, but I'll let you all ex experience that yourselves. Uh, it is a really, really fun game, and I really uh, love what Ryan and Dave did at capturing the, the true David versus Goliath feel of Belgium standing up to the might of the German army and frustrating the hell out of them. It was kind of like their uh, Molon Leve uh, moment for them. Uh, and just uh, a great and, and sadly little known uh, piece of history that uh, I think games like this, this is another great example of how war games help bring a lot of history to people. Um, this is something that will shine a light on that little known conflict and uh, a little salute to brave little Belgium. But that is a look inside Brave Little Belgium from Hollenspiel. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.